This is a Penn Stoker coal, automatic coal boiler that's built by Glenwood. As you can see, it's a, this is a 400,000 BTU boiler. This one would heat, this is heating this uh, a fabrication shop as well as a residence. This is in, housed in an outdoor structure. It is two parts. It has the boiler part and uh, behind the boiler there is a, a coal bin that can hold 11 tons of coal. And <clears throat> one of the key features that uh, has made this boiler uh, become desirable by many is its modulating control. And I'll explain that. So when the there's a sensor in the water jacket of the boiler that senses heat load and and it adjusts itself its firing rate infinitely variably depending directly upon the load that it has on it so specifically in this application where there's there's multiple zones and they come on they cycle on and off independently of each other sometimes there might only be one small zone running constituting a light heat load now and then especially early morning there is likely possibility that all zones would pull at the same time constituting a heavy draw and so this boiler here modulates itself it modulates its speed rate the heat of coal going into the boiler and the combustion air also is adjusted to compensate for that variation in, in BTU loads one of the big things that <clears throat> that my customers have have uh, told me about this is that they do not have to typically worry about fires going out on them once it's adjusted correctly and um, it's it's part of it's probably the Achilles heel in coal stoker technology in general is that when you have a long period of low demand why the coal fire tends to go out but with our modulating controller which takes it from idle point which is just a very very small coal fire just glow just a strip of coal about this wide that's glowing to a full bore in a short period of time or however long the heat demand dictates that that that, that width that bandwidth to happen it it reduces the likelihood of the fire going out under low long periods of low demand applications where this really shines is in greenhouse applications or um, or even residential where you might have a hot a domestic hot water zone running and that might be the only demand that's ru running off of it for maybe 20 hours at a time especially in the shorter months of the heating season like spring and fall when you ne need just a little bit of heat in the morning that can really make a do it be a benefit so just to go over some of the features then first of all the modulating controller is right here this is a this is a little digital thermometer that controls the whole thing the red numbers indicate actual water temperature the green numbers indicate um, the set point that's the temperature water temperature that we're shooting for so right now our actual water temperature beans of boilers offline is 78 degrees um, when this thing gets fired up our target temperature for a boiler is going to be 180 and this thing will run wide open until it reaches 140 degrees and then it'll start modulating back as the water temperature climbs closer to 180 it'll decrease speed rate and air combustion air and uh, that helps us modulate it helps us fine-tune the firing rate to the heat load this gives you this dot and dial here gives you manual control uh, over the, all of that operation if you run it wide open at 100 percent it's running completely off of this control here this allows you a manual override of this to further limit this the firing rate beyond what this is calling for which is why it's called speed limiter so basically what I'm doing here is with this knob I am doing what this controller does automatically. Zero to a hundred. Zero would be idle. And all the way up here to a hundred would be full bore. And in that range is what's called the bandwidth. 
<clears throat> and that's what the this controller takes care of automatically. Here you can see what, what it looks like. All of these components in here are industrial grade components. Nothing's built for commercial or for residential applications or consumer applications. This is all what's used in heavy industry. And so as you well know that heavy industry has a lot stricter performance requirements than what the residential industry often does. And so long life, uh, high quality components once again, which is the Glenwood trademark. Um, as you can see, this is professionally built. There's a safety circuit protectors in here to protect these expensive drives. These are variable frequency drives that, uh, that give us our variable speed, one for the fan and one for the, for the feed motor. The, um, this is a stoker mechanism here. Here obviously is the coal hopper. This is the gear motor that regulates the feed rate. Uh, right now it's at idle. I crank it up to 100. You can see it's a very slow operation that moves this plate back and forth, which pushes coal from here down in across the firing, the firing pan. As you can see, you can adjust the stroke length here for, for uh, varying uh, types of coal. Here is, the, here is the blower, primary air blower, combustion air blower, whatever you call it want to call it that uh, provides the combustion air for the fire. There is this whole mechanism can be unbolted for installation if you want to move it through a doorway or um, or maybe down a stairs or anything like that. This can be removed so that you have just the boiler vessel itself and this and then this can be installed later. Um, in the air pan, in the air chamber in here, ashes do build up and so this is very easy to remove you can take a mounting nut off here there's one just like it on the other side and you can pop that fan off and it's very easy to access to clean that out a shot back in there and just uh, cleans it out very easily in here is the um, is the access of course this is the access door it's a hinged access door these are air ports to allow secondary combustion of the uh, of the coal gases. Whenever you're burning coal, uh, it will throw off sulfur gas, which is very explosive. And uh, if there's not secondary combustion uh, air over the fire, why uh, it will create backfires. This is the coal grate. You can see it's got a bed of spent coal in there. Uh, it pushes that plate that I showed you over there on that side, pushes the coal down across that slope grate and pushes it off the, the burnt ashes off the end. And uh, when that thing, that the fire will surge back and forth on that grate as it modulates. Under full fire, your red line of coal will be down about here. Under idle, it'll be all the way back up here almost at the entry from the hopper. And uh, <clears throat> we have had very, very good success. Size coal on these is, is, uh, is rice. Uh, this is designed to burn anthracite, which is um, considered hard coal. Uh, we do make boilers that burn, also burn soft coal. They're a little different design. The soft coal boilers can also burn anthracite. The anthracite boilers are not able to burn soft coal. Soft coal in, is bituminous or sub-bituminous. Uh, hard coal is always anthracite. The ashes then drop off that into an ash pan. Obviously an easily, easily removable ash. This is a large size ash pan. Options for this include automatic ash removal which that would be, instead of an ash pan like this, there would be a screw conveyor in the bottom that actually augers the ashes to the outside of your building and, uh, and into an ash receptacle, such as a dump hopper, tip, tipping dump hopper, five gallon drum on casters. Uh, those are two ways that some people handle their ashes if they don't want to handle it by, by hand like this. When you get into the larger size boilers, we strongly recommend that because coal makes a lot of ash, but it's something that uh, is an option. 
Um, I want to show you the heat exchanger now. These boilers are very, very efficient. Thanks to the modulating combustion process, like I explained, as also as the aggressive heat exchanger. You can see the spiral baffles in here. This gives us extreme heat transfer, very aggressive heat exchange from these baffles. This allows the hot air that's coming up through the tubes to rotate in the tubes, which creates um, much more opportunity for the heat, hot air to transfer into the, into the pipes. Um, this is water all around these tubes here. And, uh, <clears throat> and the hot air coming up through here uh, is, is forced to rotate in the tube around this, these spirals. And that, that uh, allows the heat to, to spend more time in the tube so the cooler water can extract more out. We typically run around 88 to 90 percent heating efficiency on these, depending on the firing rate. Uh, because of the modulating controller, it is possible to run a boiler about 50,000 BTUs over its, over its rating without harming it. But it starts dropping in efficiency once you start running over it. Uh, so that's why I said it varies in efficiency some depending on the firing rate. Under, at, at, this is a 400,000 BTU boiler, like I said. So at 400,000 BTUs output, our input is going to be running at about, um, probably about 420. 410, 415 to 420. Um, so we have a we have a very high, very high efficiency here, and uh, <clears throat> our stack temperatures typically run just under 300 degrees. Uh, if they're pushed really, really hard, we can run them a little hotter than that. That's about what you want. You don't want your stack temperature much colder than that with coal. If you get too cold, uh, you'll start getting condensation, which uh, Coal gas has sulfuric acid in it, and uh, when it condenses, it becomes very, very corrosive. And so it's important that, <clears throat> that the coal boiler isn't too efficient. Okay, we do and insist that this is the plumbing arrangement that is adhered to when these boilers are installed. Because of our modulating controller, we do go with a semi-low mass boiler. And because of that, we want our we want uh, the thing installed according to primary secondary loop installation requirements. So this demonstrates that type of a setup. This is your primary loop coming out of the top of the boiler, circular through a circular pump, right back into the bottom of the boiler. It goes around the back side. And that just circulates water inside the boiler. This is your secondary loop. This is heat zone to the the shop building and this is heat zone to the house building and so when those circulator any one of those circulator pumps starts this one runs so that there's always uh, sufficient hot water mixed in with the cold return water that's coming back so the boiler does not go through what's called thermal shock which is bad for the boiler and uh, <clears throat> so primary loop secondary loop plumbing this would be your secondary hot going out secondary return coming in for zone one secondary supply hot going out secondary return coming back for zone two this would be your and those would be called secondary loops this is called primary loop we do require for warranty that that plumbing arrangement is adhered to you can see it's a very professionally installed operation and uh, <clears throat> when boilers are installed like this, they work very, very well. When it's a little bit more expensive to set up a system like this, but, um, but the performance on the boiler side is, is much greater and, uh, and you just have a lot less stress on the boiler with an arrangement like this. Mm -hmm.